Hello, welcome to my channel and specifically to the series Deep Learning with Keras and TensorFlow 2.0. If you're already subscribed to my channel, thank you and welcome back. If you are not yet subscribed and find the content on this channel useful, please subscribe. I would love to have you part of my channel. All right. So far in this series, we have learned how to create deep learning models using both sequential and functional API in Keras. And when we discussed about the functional API, we mentioned that we must start with creating an input node. However, we did not discuss details about why this input node is necessary and also how should we define this input node. So in this video, my focus is to specifically discuss more details about this node. So we'll study why this input node is needed in the first place, what is it, and then we'll run through some live examples using different types of different shapes of the input data and see how we should define this shape parameter. So the first question is, why do we need that input node? In order to understand that, let's look at an example of a fully connected layer. So in a fully connected layer, we know that once we give it the input, and then let's say we have the first layer, then it's going to create the weights from each input to each of the neurons. So if we don't give it the shape of the input, then Keras functional API is not going to know how many weights it needs to create for the first layer. That's why we have to first give it the shape of the input as the first node, which feeds into the first layer of our model. And that's the importance of creating this input node. Now, the second question is, what exactly is Keras.input object? For that, let's look at the parameters of this Keras.input object. This is a copy from the functional API. So maybe we'll just go to the functional API documentation directly and look at all the parameters over there. According to the documentation, keras.input object takes all these parameters. And as we can read here, all of these parameters are not required parameters. Really, only the shape parameter is a required parameters. The rest of, rest of them are optional. In this video, I'm not going to discuss all of these parameters. I'm only going to focus on the shape parameter since that is the essential parameter we will need to know when we create, when we use functional APIs. You can read more about the types of errors you might get if you don't use a proper shape. And I'll leave that for you to explore. But for now, let's try to understand how to define this shape parameter. We'll go back to our slides now and let's go to the slide mode. Okay, so the shape parameter here is really the shape of each sample in our data set. Let's look at some examples. This is our first example. So let's say our data set is really small. It has only three samples. It has only three examples. So and each sample or example in our data set consists of 10 elements. So in this case, the total shape of our input data is three by 10, but the shape of each sample is one by 10. So when we feed this type of data into Keras model, what we need to specify as the shape is the shape of each element of the data set, which in this case is 10. So we would specify keras.input shape equals 10, and we do need to include this comma at the end if our input is one dimensional like, like this one. Now, let's look at the second example. So let's say we have, a, we have a data set that still contains three samples, but in this case, each sample is two by four. So we have two rows and four columns. So in this case, what our shape, what shape we will be using for the input dot shape is going to be two by four because each sample in the data set is two by four. And we will define Keras dot input shape equals two comma four. I think you get the idea. So let's look at the third example. So in third example, 
let's say you have images. So in the images, we normally have uh, for the RGB image, as an example, we're going to have length, width, and number of channels. In that case, we're going to have each sample that is three dimensional. For this uh, example that I'm showing you here, I did not show the number of channels, but let's assume that each the length and width is two by four, but each of this element has three channels. So our, each sample is two by four by three. So in this case, what's going to be the shape of the keras.input object? It's going to be keras.input shape equals two, four, comma, three. So that's how we define the shape of the input object. It, again, it is the shape of one sample in our entire data set. And another important thing to note is that when we define this shape, when we define this keras.input object, we do not include the batch size, batch size in here. So that's all. And then now let's look at some of the examples live. Now that we know how to define the shape parameter of keras.input object, let's see how to define it with the real data. Before I define that, let me see what my data looks like. So I have some training and testing data. The shape of my data is, let's print that out. So let's run it. So it tells me that the shape of my training data is 93 and 286524. So there are 93 samples, total number of samples in my data set. And the shape of each sample is 286524. So this is the shape that I will be defining when I define input start keras object. So let me show you the code where I use this. If you look at the same model, the one we discussed in the slides, where we have the fully connected layer, we have 512 and 128, and so we've done layers. As you can see, here I define keras.input object. It is taking input shape as the parameter. And this input shape, if we go back to our model here, this is basically the second element of when we when we try to get the shape of the training set. So this is what that shape is. Now let's look at the, uh, maybe we don't need to run the model. So let's look at another example. So in this case, in, for this example, my input is a different kind of input. Let's print out the shape of that input first. So as we can see, the input shape of my data set, of my training data set, is 93 by 573 by 500. So 93 is the number of samples I have in my data set. In this case, in my training data set. And this is not relevant, by the way, for the, for the input dot object. What is relevant is the shape of each sample. So this 573 and 500 is the shape of each sample in my data set. So that's what I would be feeding to my model. So in this case, let's say, um, let's look, let, let's say, let's try LSTM model. So previously we have been discussing so far about the fully connected models. In this example, we will just try out the LSTM model. I'm not going to discuss how to create this model in this video. Maybe we'll cover that in the future video. In this video, I'm just demonstrating how to properly give the shape. So in this case, as we studied, uh, each sample has 573 and 500 shape. So if we uh, run our LSTM model, which in this case is defined here, and I need to give it the shape. So I defines the inputs equals keras dot input object and I define the shape 573 and 500 as you can see they both match so that's what's important and if we run it and we're going to get the answer so let's just run it for fun it 
it may take some time because I'm using a CPU so it might take some time but the important point here is you, we don't have to look at the results because that's not, not the motive of this video what we what I wanted to show you was this output here so when we give it the input shape um, to the first layer so the first layer which is actually not a layer it's just the first node it has the shape that we defined it has 573 and 500 none again is the batch number and we are not defining any batch number which is a variable in this case so that's why it's none so the shape that we're giving is 573 and 500 there are a few other ways you can define the input shape uh, for this type of data so let's say you have a data set that has a variable variable length so what i mean by that is let's say you know that the number of uh, columns you have in your data set is 500 but the number of rows in your data set maybe is a variable each sample has a variable data set so in that case you don't have to define uh, you you don't have to give all of the dimensions what you can do is you can simply give none for the dimension that is a variable so if i if i run this example again and if i define the input shape as uh, let's go back to our core so if I define the input shape as shape equals none comma 500 or I define it as 573 comma none it will still work and the differences that you will notice is in this uh, in the first argument here and here so finally to summarize what we learned in this video we learned how to properly define the input object specifically we learned how to define the shape parameter for different types of data that we might have so important things to remember is that the shape refers to the shape of each sample in our data set now we also looked at an example where we said none is also a valid value and none is used when the when we when the shape of our shape of our data can be a variable finally when we define this inputs object the shape should not include the batch size it's only the shape of each sample of our data set so that's all for this video if you like this video please subscribe and i will see you in the next one thank you